Canada has the ambitious goal of having a net zero economy by 2050, and the government has focused considerable attention on Canada's largest emitter, our oil and gas industry. In order to reduce and cap its greenhouse gas emissions, Canada's energy sector must continue to innovate. It is therefore putting a strong focus on investing in the technologies that will allow it to track, reduce, and reuse its carbon and other GHG emissions. In fact, 75% of clean technology investments in the country come from Canada's energy corporations, and researchers, organizations, and companies from around the world are pushing energy innovations forward to meet the commitments Canada has signed on to in the Paris Agreement. We are featuring three innovations and areas of research that have been spurred by investments from the oil and gas sector and organizations like Alberta Innovates. Methane gas accounts for approximately 10% of greenhouse gas emissions, but is 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Understanding the impact of greenhouse gas emissions in Canada and the human causes behind it is easy for most, but discovering, tracking, and monitoring their levels in the atmosphere is much harder. Looking to solve this problem, aerospace engineer Stéphane Germain launched GHGSAT in 2011. The Montreal-based company benefited from a collaboration with Canada's Oil Sands Innovation Alliance, COSIA, as well as early investor Suncor, to develop Canada's most promising greenhouse gas tracking device, CLAIR. CLAIR is a satellite that was launched in 2016, only about the size of a microwave. CLAIR is equipped with the world's first sensor for small satellites, that can detect sources of methane emissions. GHGSAT's patented imaging interferometer, which merges two sources of light to create an interference pattern, enables Claire to pinpoint emissions from polluting sites across the world. She orbits the Earth from 500 kilometers above its surface, sending data and high-definition images back to the company. GHGSAT is the only company in the world with this capability. This technology allows geographically dispersed industries such as oil and gas, coal mining, and waste management to now accurately monitor their emissions from across different sites. Not only is this a lower cost solution than on the ground monitoring, but it can be done easily and quickly. Claire is not so lonely doing her valuable work out there in space anymore. GHGSAT has now launched two other satellites, Hugo and Iris. Canadians are familiar with the most common greenhouse gas emitting sources, like oil and gas, coal, and transportation. But one of the biggest contributors to climate change is all around us, and quite literally beneath our feet, concrete. Buildings contribute up to 40% of overall greenhouse gas emissions worldwide, mainly due to the high carbon intensity of concrete. And cement? The most used building material on the planet alone accounts for 7% of total global carbon dioxide emissions. If cement were its own country, it would rank third in greenhouse gas emissions behind China and the US. Fortunately, the next generation of concrete production aims to solve this problem. A Canadian company called Carbon Cure Technology, based in Nova Scotia, has developed a cleaner method of concrete production. Carbon Cure injects recycled carbon dioxide into fresh concrete during the mixing process, where it reacts with the calcium ions in cement to form calcium carbonate, a mineral that strengthens the concrete while sequestering the carbon. Not only does this technology reduce carbon emissions, it even lowers the amount of cement needed in the mix. This technology lowers costs, strengthens concrete, and makes concrete a more sustainable choice for building industry contractors. While buildings remain a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions, technologies like carbon cures can pave a path towards a cleaner environment for everyone. Cars are heavy and require a lot of fuel to move, but what if we could reduce the weight of cars by 50%? that would decrease their emissions by at least one third. This would be possible with the adoption of carbon fiber in car manufacturing. Carbon or graphite fibers are five to 10 micrometers in diameter and are composed of carbon atoms. 
They are light, stiff, strong, and have a high temperature tolerance and chemical resistance. And despite how commonplace it seems in our world, we have barely scratched the surface of possible applications. The problem is, right now, carbon fiber production is expensive and environmentally detrimental. However, this may soon no longer be the case. Alberta Innovate's Carbon Fiber Grand Challenge has called on teams of researchers from universities in Canada and abroad to develop a new method of carbon fiber production made from Alberta's abundant supply of bitumen. Bitumen is a black viscous mixture of hydrocarbons and a natural residue from petroleum production. Researchers like Joanna Wong from the University of Calgary and Joao Suarez from the University of Alberta are all engaged in the challenge with the hope of developing pathways for large-scale production of carbon fiber from Alberta's bitumen. These technologies are three of the many innovations that Canadian researchers, innovators, and scientists have created to help Canada reach its goal of net zero emissions by 2050. Continued investments in applied research, as well as the harnessed power of Canada's energy innovation ecosystem, will ensure our country continues to innovate to meet our targets.